Well, hello everybody. It's Terry Walsh. It's Wednesday, September 9th. I'm glad to see all of you today. This is just a quick update on some of the things that are going on around the campus and how we're doing. We just literally received our financial results for the second month of the fiscal year. So our fiscal year begins on, on July 1st. So we've completed July and August. Uh, you will recall that in July we had additional COVID expenses that we had not received money from the government for, and we have now received money from the government. Uh, it is not covering everything that we spend on COVID-19, but it did reduce the hole we were in. You know, we were $103,000 below budget after the first month of the fiscal year, and we, were, we had spent $103,000 on COVID expenses. So without COVID, uh, we would have broken even exactly on uh, for the month of July. In the month of August, we still had COVID expenses and we did receive some more money from the government that didn't cover everything. But we have pulled ourselves up out of the hole a little bit. So rather than being $103,000 in the hole, uh, we've actually made some ground and now we are $71,000 below budget, but that also includes additional $89,000 worth of COVID expenses that we have not been reimbursed for. So overall, we're actually, if we didn't have COVID, we would be beating budget by about $16,000 or so. So that's a pretty good thing for us to be doing. Now, there are some things holding us down, or we would be doing even far better. And one of those is in our care center, in the Village Care Center, our skilled nursing facility, we are still restricted by state and county rules when we admit Medicare Part A patients out of the hospital into the care center for therapy, we still have to isolate every one of those new admissions for 14 days in a room all by themselves. And because we have semi-private rooms or two beds to a room in our care center, that means we artificially are restricted from using the second bet in the care center. So we have uh, where we normally have 118 licensed beds in our care center. We're actually at this point only able to use about 108 of those beds because of those isolation restrictions. So we're below budget in the care center on our Medicare business because we are restricted from admitting more people because there's isolation going on in some of those rooms. So that is holding us down a little bit, uh, but still the care center is doing a great job on managing their expenses in a likewise fashion. So overall they're doing okay, we're just not doing as well as what we budgeted to do. And then of course the COVID expenses are costing us money. One of the main expenses in COVID is the cost of the employee COVID-19 testing that we have to do periodically in the care center and in Fountain View and assisted living. So the state and the county require us to test 100% of our employees periodically in the care center. Now, we have been receiving some funding to cover that in the past, but for the last couple of months, we've been absorbing that and we don't know at this point whether there's more money coming or not. Each one of those tests cost us about $100 for us to have an employee tested, to send the sample to the lab and to get the result back, about $100 each. We're spending about $40,000 every time we do a test. And so, uh, or at least per month, about $40,000. So that's costing us quite a bit of money. Now, just yesterday, we uh, searched for and received a new uh, lab testing um, mechanism or machine to use in our care center. So now we can do the test ourselves, do a rapid test. We receive the results in about 15 minutes. We do it all in the care center. And now the cost, instead of $100 per test, is now about $25 per test. So I want to congratulate our team, Lynn Myers and Stacy Zurban and the team in the care center and Nicole and everybody for finding us a way to meet the requirements for employee testing to literally cut the cost for us by 75%. So that's going to help us if we're going to have to continue to pay for our employee tests by ourselves 
we want to find obviously the most efficient and cost effective way that's still reliable and accurate and this test will meet the requirements that the state has given us at much much less cost so that uh, those savings actually began yesterday when we received the machine so we still have some uh, cost in the pipeline for some of those former lab tests that we sent off to the lab but now we'll be able to do those in-house and save some money going forward so hopefully that'll help us with our financial situation as we continue moving through the COVID episode. Now what we don't know and what we're learning is that the frequency of the testing might be increasing overall. Now this is a state rule and a county rule, not a Friendship Village rule, but because of the prevalence of COVID-19 in the community, we all, all, sen all senior living communities, all skilled nursing facilities have to follow the same rules. It doesn't matter that we've gone more than three months without any residents in the care center with no COVID-19. So we haven't had any residents in the care center with COVID-19 for over three months, which is an outstanding record and certainly a commendable record, but it's not our record that matters in terms of the testing frequency. It's the prevalence of COVID-19 out in the entire state and in the county and the prevalence in the county as a whole is not doing well. And so we have to abide by the same rules in terms of the frequency of testing of our residents and our employees, and that costs us money. So our finance office is continually uh, scratching and digging and working with state and local officials on identifying funding uh, to continue to help us pay for these costs. But in the meantime, we have to assume the worst and uh, pay for it ourselves and we continue to seek reimbursement for that but the reimbursement pipeline is beginning to dry up i think and so it's the reason for us to want to do what we can to keep our costs down and find the most efficient and effective way for us to do that so our staff is doing that and doing a great job and i anticipate uh, us being able to get our costs down uh, for covid 19 direct related expenses much better as we continue to move forward since we got that new lab test machine yesterday and we'll be able to do them right on site at a quarter of the cost. So that's all good. Uh, we are challenged in our pipeline, our waiting list for our independent living apartments. Uh, we are, um, while we're still 90% sold, that's not the number we want to be. We are normally pre-COVID, before COVID started, around 95% sold on a normal day. We're 88% occupied, meaning 88% of all of our units have an occupant. That's a low number for us. We're usually in the low 90s. And so the pipeline of future residents or prospective residents has really slowed down because of COVID-19. A lot of people are hesitant to make a move right now, both physically out of their homes and financially, with the entrance fees and the monthly fees that it takes to live in Friendship Village, they're just a little bit apprehensive about moving their money and taking the, those financial steps. Now, I would say the risk for them is much better in the long term because of living that Friendship Village with life care. But still, it's that initial step of writing the check that makes people nervous initially. In the long run, it certainly handsomely pays off. For them it's just that first step it happens to be during covid right now and so it's been a challenge for us to find uh, prospective residents and our pipelines drying up i would encourage you strongly if you know friends who are considering moving into senior living to please refer them to us so that we can talk with them one-on-one -on -one and try to work uh, arrangements and try to work around their financial concerns to try to get them here on campus it's a safe place to be. It's a great place to be. I've received many, many notes from many, many residents on their satisfaction and their, their um, high spirits and their gratefulness that they did move here even during COVID uh, into an oasis where it's a little bit more safe from COVID-19 than if they were still living in their own home. So if you can help us, if you know anybody, bring them, bring them by my office. Uh, if you want, and I'm happy to meet and talk with anybody 
but we have got to begin working even extra hard now to try to rebuild our pipeline of prospective residents. And you are all very important in that. Our greatest referral source are our current residents, you. And so we ask you to help us do that. Our assisted living building is doing well. They are filling up. As you know, we built and added 15 new memory care units at last count. 14 of those are already occupied. We're beginning to fill up the rest of the building. Uh, we still have a little ways to go, but we've got more people coming in already. Uh, so things are, are looking good there. Our employee count, uh, we're actually attracting some employees now. So things are beginning to improve in the search for employees. No, they're not where we would like them to be. We're still paying people overtime more than we would like to. We'd like to add on more employees, but we, um, we are able to attract new employees, and every week we've got more in our new employee orientation, and that's a good sign. Again, one of our best referral sources for employees are our current employees who know people and some of our residents who have grandchildren or great-grandchildren who are looking for a job, maybe their first job, maybe as a server or something on campus. Right now we're in need of servers at Fountain View in assisted living. And sometimes parents are concerned about sending their children to a senior living community because of the stigma that it has with COVID-19. But you know, we've not had ever a single case of COVID-19 at Fountain View in assisted living. So if you know anybody that might be looking for something and they're worried about somebody coming to a senior living community to work, um, if there's no safer place than um, Fountain View right now because they've never had anybody that had COVID-19. And so there's a great place for them to be able to work if, if somebody's looking for a position there. We, um, you know, as you know, we had one independent living resident who did test positive for COVID-19. They had not been out of their apartment since even before they had tested positive. Uh, unfortunately, that resident, not due to COVID, um, is in the hospital currently be for other issues, other concerns and things, uh, not necessarily for COVID exclusively. And so we anticipate them actually coming back out of the hospital and perhaps going to the care center for some therapy before they go back to their independent living apartment. So they're doing well, uh, they're recovering well, they'll be back home with us here on our campus with our family here probably today. Uh, and we welcome them back and we're excited to have them back. And when everything is well and they're all healed and back to good health in the care center, they'll be moving back into their um, independent living apartment, hopefully uh, with COVID-19 behind them and back into the normal population. So. Uh, once again, we love all of our residents here and we're looking forward to having them join us back here in good health. And so we're, uh, we're excited to, to know that they're able to come back out of the hospital from their other conditions and back home to us here. The construction project is going really well. Joe Frine just uh, reported to us that they're about 90% complete with all the paint on the walls in the care center and almost 90% complete with the flooring in the new care center. As you've probably seen, or some of you, if, if you've not, I encourage you to take a walk down around the care center or as close as you can get. But the landscaping's going in, there are bushes planted, there's mulch down, and they're putting in the sod yesterday and today. And things are looking really nice around the care center on the outside. Uh, don't despair. Some of the bushes look really tiny right now, but they're, uh, as bushes do, they will grow. So they're all going to grow in place. It's all going to fill out and look really nice when it's all over. But right now they look tiny, like the kind you would buy at your house uh, and plant in your own yard. And then over time they get large and fill out and all those sorts of things. So that's happening. It's all looking very nice down there. We got some good rain the other day, or yesterday, last night. And, uh, and hopefully things will be taken off there, but things are really looking good and there's a lot less dirt to look at now and a lot more green grass. So we're all very thankful for that. Our chaplains continue to do a great job for our residents, providing services. So um, we appreciate everybody's, I do get cards and letters from residents thanking us for our uh, chaplain services and what we're doing for them. 
And on our IT side, uh, we've made the repairs necessary on our Channel 900 DVD player, so hopefully all the movies and other things that we do uh, will be able to resume now. I know uh, over the next couple of days, the Food and Beverage Department is going to treat uh, many of you who signed up for some lobster. Uh, so over the next couple of days, uh, you're going to be getting at one of the interesting points about the lobster tails that are coming out today and tomorrow or tomorrow and Friday uh, will be uh, that you know a lot of the restaurants are closed nowadays so the demand for lobster tails has declined because restaurants aren't doing the business that they used to so Jim Hunsey has been able to find lobster tails for very reasonable prices and bringing them to you so that's exciting I know we're gonna have a walk through luau I believe on Saturday uh, we can't all stand still and, and we're not going to do the limbo and everybody climb under a pole uh, but we're going to do a walk through luau I know there's a cookout on the patio so we're beginning to get some things going on with groups smaller groups to entertain everybody and kind of bring some life back into the campus the temperatures should be cooling off a little bit now so we can enjoy the the patios and the outdoor spaces a little bit more without being too hot uh, so um, I think things are going to improve. The landscaping is looking really nice. Overall, the campus is in, is in fantastic shape. Uh, so everything is going well. I'm happy to be able to talk with you again today. I hope to be able to see you again around the campus. Everybody's doing a wonderful job. I appreciate the continued diligence and the attention to detail with the residents in maintaining your mask wearing your hand sanitation. I am getting a little bit concerned about the proximity some of you are having toward other residents. You're getting a little close and we're forgetting about the social distancing. So I'd like to remind everybody to do better, begin doing better at the social distancing than what I'm seeing. And when I come in in the mornings, I see clusters of people waiting to go through the line to pick up breakfast, but they're clustered all in close groups together and we've got to do better and spread those out a little bit so I ask for your cooperation there we have such a wonderful track record for COVID-19 and keeping it away from all of our residents on the campus <clears throat> I don't want us to get a little bit too relaxed if we don't have to be and try to continue keeping our track record strong <clears throat> that doesn't mean you can't socialize and talk to each other but do the best you can to try to not get up in everybody's space uh, and try to spread out a little bit further. We're getting a little bit too lax on that. Uh, I know we have exercise classes going on. We've got the piano playing and the sing-alongs are wonderful. Everybody's enjoying that. So life is picking up a little bit more at Friendship Village. We're really happy to see that. And uh, we hope that everybody is, uh, your uh, old lifestyle is coming back a little bit closer to normal. We're still not fully opening the dining rooms yet but Jim is getting smaller groups and reservations for smaller numbers of, of residents to eat in the dining rooms as you wish but surprisingly or maybe not surprisingly most of our residents still prefer to have room delivery and that's fine we'll continue to do that for a while uh, but even though there are opportunities for residents to eat in the dining rooms in small numbers so not everybody can do it anyway but in small numbers that's surprisingly small numbers of people interested in doing that so that's kind of uh, interesting to us, just as a, a factoid for us. But overall, I think everybody's doing well. The campus is looking beautiful. We made it through the summer without things drying up and dying on us uh, in, the, in, the, in terms of our plants and our landscaping. So uh, I want to thank all of our team. Our employees love doing what they do. Um, they're all very careful about trying to stay away from COVID-19 as are you and I appreciate that and that's what's given us the track record that we've had here in Sunset Hills of Friendship Village for COVID-19. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you again next Wednesday and until then I'll see you around the campus. Thank you. Bye.